Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In our previous episode, we created a basic flamethrower effect using the Niagara system in Unreal Engine. If you haven't checked that episode out yet, I highly recommend checking it out first so you can follow along with this lesson. In this episode, we're going to enhance that flamethrower effect by customizing the flame, making it look even more realistic. We'll be using custom textures for the flames, applying constraints like gravity and collision, and adding smoke to give a more authentic, lifelike appearance. By the end of this episode, you'll have an impressive realistic flame that you can customize to meet your project. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I'm gonna pull this flamethrower out. Uh, this is the one that we created in the previous episode, just so we can remember what that looks like. If we play this, uh, we see our flame. This flame is just little uh, circular um, images, which is not really accurate to a flame. And then the way it dies off on the end, it kind of looks even more fake. Um, so we're going to add a texture to this. Uh, we're going to create a material to use instead of just using the default sprite. To do that, we need to import a texture. I already have one that I created uh, for this project, just called Smoke. I'm going to copy that over here to my flamethrower. And I'm going to use this texture here. You can make your own texture, which I made this myself, and I can show you how to do that real quick. If you pull up any kind of uh, art or editing app, you can just do a quick little image here. I like to do a 512 by 512. And this needs to be grayscale for the way we're going to handle it. So you make your background completely black, <clears throat> then grab a spray can up to thickness, lighten the opacity, and then kind of just spray around. Um, the more random variation you get, the cooler the effect can be and the less uh, repetitive it's going to look. So just something like that is what I did. And if you see, it actually looks really similar. It doesn't have to look the same. You can make it as unique as you want, but you want some good spots with some black in it and you want some good white spots and then some uh, lighter spots. That's just a good way to do it. And then save this as a PNG and drag it or import it into your project. And that'll be good enough. I already have this one that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and make a material out of this. And this material we're going to call fire and go ahead and open that up. For this material, we're going to be using the emissive and opacity um, only. So click on your output here and change the material blend mode to translucent and the shading model to unlit. And then we're going to use a particle color, a texture sample, set your texture sample to that um, smoke. And then we also want to use a, a radiant, radial gradient exponential. And is what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the R value here with this uh, radial gradient. From here, we're actually going to multiply again. And this is going to be multiplied with the alpha from our particle color. And this is going to hook directly up to our opacity. You see now we can uh, start to see the outline of where our actual uh, texture is. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is come off of your multiply. We're going to do another multiply. And this one we're going to multiply with the RGB of the particle color and connect that to emissive. And now you see some actual uh, smoky effect, the outline here. Yours, if you create it, will look a little different, but uh, again, if it the more different it is, it kind of creates a cool 
effect. Off of our density down here on this radial gradient, we're going to come off of this. Um, if you hold one and click, you'll get just a single value. Plug that into your density. And for this, I'm going to use like a 0 0.4, but we may need to adjust this as we go. Then off of our texture sample, we're going to use the UVs. And we're going to use a panner. And in this painter, set this to something like a 0 0.1 maybe. If you disconnect this for a second, you'll see the, what the painting is doing. It's actually shifting that image up so it'll look like it's moving. Uh, this will help us get different spots on our texture so we can create some more variation. Off this coordinates, go ahead and do a multiply. And we're going to multiply uh, text chords. And then we want to grab a dynamic parameter. And this dynamic parameter we're going to set inside of our um, actual Niagara system and be able to affect where this is on our, it's panning through uh, different areas on our UVs. So let's just name this um, fire pan for now. And then this number will be affected in our uh, Niagara system. Uh, don't forget to connect this back up if you disconnected it. And then now we can jump over to our Niagara system. So let's open that up. The first thing you want to do is go to Sprite Renderer and let's apply this new material, which we named M Fire. You don't really see anything yet, and I'll show you why. Uh, with this new, with this texture that we're using and using just UVs from it, uh, we're only getting a small little section out of it. So if you look close, you can actually kind of see something here spraying through just ever so slightly. Um, we want to increase the size and change the color of that. So let's go into our flamethrower. Let's start at the scale sprite size and let's go ahead and double this. We see it got a little bigger, a little thicker. Uh, the other thing we want to do uh, to affect the size is the, the initial particle. Let's go ahead and double these. Um, a little thicker as well. Let's um, up the color too. So for the color, the higher these numbers are, the more emissive this material is gonna be right now. It's kind of flat. So let's multiply this by Let's take it to like the tens. So we'll go like 70, uh, 15, and maybe zero there. And now if you look, you can see the actual flame from the randomness of our uh, texture. So we're already looking more like a realistic flame. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and get that dynamic material parameter. Uh, go to your particle update and click this. And our fire pan, which is what we set um, here as one of our parameters, and that's being multiplied by our text chords. We're going to uh, give this a, a different text chord and see what that looks like. Um, 
what this is doing is it's actually changing where it's getting the uh, texture areas at over time and it's panning. So we're going to start seeing some more randomness to this. It might go thinner or thicker. So on yours, you'll have to play with this number and see where you where you like it. Uh, one thing you can do is do a random range float. And if you leave it at zero to a one, that might be what you're looking for, or you can change it to uh, something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, kind of just whatever whatever works for your project. If you're not using the same texture that I am, then it's going to be different. And I think that actually looks pretty good. And we have something that looks more like a real flame. Some random variation to it. A uh, different kind of flame look coming off and it doesn't look like it's repeating. The next thing that I want to do is come in here and I'm actually going to copy and paste this into here as well. And then we're going to rename this. Um, to something like smoke. Um, uh, for now, you can go ahead and we're gonna add that same uh, material. It should be there since we copied everything over. And what we're gonna do is start changing the color of this. So if you go to color, um, undo this variable for now so that we can affect just this. And let's set this to a white so we can see it. Um, right now, it's overlapping exactly with this one because they're the same size and everything. Um, so we're going to start changing that a little bit. Um, first of all, let's go to our solve forces velocity and let's cut this down to about half and see what that does. So that puts it maybe where we want it. I actually, that's way more than half. Uh, but let's do like 250 for now. And then we want to, we're going to change the size of this quite a bit. Do like, that might be too much. We kind of just want smoke to be right at the very beginning of it. Do something like that. The next thing we want is this to not look so concentrated in here. And to do that, we're going to go to the gravity force. And let's do a random uh, range vector. And in this, we're going to apply a negative to the minimum and a positive to the maximum so we can get less concentrated. It'll spread out over an area. So let's do, let's start with like negative 250. And we'll see how that looks. And then positive 250. Uh, maybe not quite enough. Let's go 500. Kind of looking a little uh, wider here. Let's try a thousand. We also want to cut this linear force down quite a bit. Um, that's right currently interfering with our gravity. It's being a little bit overpowered. So let's cut this down by, um, that's definitely too much or not enough. Let's go half and then what we'll do is we'll go back to our gravity now that we can see what it's um, doing. 
the linear force was overpowering our gravity, so we weren't seeing the difference uh, quick enough. I think that looks good, but let's cut it down a little more. Um, that looks pretty good. We also want to change uh, how much of this is getting emitted so we can knock our spawn rate down by quite a bit. We can add a curl force. We have one in the particle update, which affects it while it's moving, but we can add one to our um, spawn as well. And this will give us some randomness about its spawn, make it look a little more chaotic. Then just kind of play with that until you get uh, the effect that you want. I kind of like that for just showing it off um, so you can actually still kind of see it. If you go to your shape location, you can take this sphere down uh, quite a bit. You can mess with stuff like the velocity here. So it's starting to look more like a steady stream. But for now, we'll leave that where it's at. Then let's see what that looks like in the game. It looks pretty good. <clears throat> One thing I kind of want is the smoke to uh, typically go up more than out. So while this is okay to be spread out with this gravity, let's still do in the Z direction that it tends to uh, float higher more often. So let's do like a instead of going from negative 100, we'll do half gravity maybe and see what that looks like in the game. <clears throat> yeah, now we're starting to see it kind of float up whenever it comes out, which is kind of good. Let's also go back to our linear force and let's take this down even more so that it's not being pushed out as much. Maybe even just do away with the linear force for now. Nope, we need a little bit. Okay. Then, see what else we can change here. Maybe even take the spawn rate way lower so it's just a little bit of smoke. And the final thing we're going to affect is this uh, color. Uh, I don't really want it to be white. I want it to look more like it's something that's burning. So let's do on the color. Let's see what more of a gray looks like. And we'll just, again, multiply this by 100. I forgot the decimal on this one, so that's pretty green. And then we'll look at that. So I like this gray a little better. You could probably go a little darker too, and that would be fine. Um, but for now, I think this is going to work just for what we're showing off. So let's go ahead and play that. So now this looks more like some real flames with some smoke coming up. Uh, the next thing just to, that we can tweak this with 
Right now, the flames just kind of go through everything, which could be what you want uh, for your project or game. And uh, one thing you can do is come into your flame emitter, and we can add a collision. And then this will kind of have the flames flying over. Um, it won't go through things. So if you see over here, it starts to go kind of up the ramp instead of through the ramp. You see it deflects off the wall, kind of goes up the ramp. So you can get uh, some different effects by doing that. One final thing that you can do to uh, kind of change the look of this, if you go to your flamethrower, uh, if you go to your fire material rather, you can change this density here on your radial gradient. Um, and you can see what that does as well. It makes that flame a lot thicker. If you cut that down to half, then it's a lot less dense. Uh, so you can play around with that as well. I think this is a good number for this project. And remember, you can um, customize this kind of any way you want. Uh, custom textures helps just to keep things random and different. Change your uh, panner speed around. Um, the faster, obviously, it'll kind of look like it's panning faster as it moves give you even more variation kind of quicker uh, go through and affect all of this any way you want add your smoke in change your smoke around um, anything that you want so that's going to do it for this episode in this episode we've taken our basic flamethrower effect and enhanced it by creating custom textures to make the flames more realistic we applied constraints like gravity and collision to add a more natural behavior and added smoke to make it feel more authentic Remember, these are just starting points, and I encourage you to experiment and tweak the settings to create a flamethrower effect that best suits your project. If you learned something in this episode or found it helpful, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes. As always, happy developing, and I'll see you in the next one.